Welcome again. Thanks, Vanessa. If you just joined us, you can um, feel free to add your name um, and your organization and where you're coming from into the chat. Welcome, Joanne. We send wonderful. We'll hopefully get started here in another minute or two. And since this is recording, I think we're going to start uh, pretty much on time to get this rolling. We are going to be quick, kind of in and out, give you all of the basic details that you need, a bunch of resources if you'd like to follow up, and then we will send you on your way because I suspect you're not, I don't know, taking a nap for the rest of the day. You have lots of things to get onto um, for your day. So Let's just go ahead and get started since it is right here at the hour. Welcome. We are so, so glad to have you. This is the first of three webinars in our Apple Crunch webinar series, but we are extremely excited because this is actually a Apple Crunch and Celebrating Seasonality Recipe Guide partnership webinar specific for the early care and education audience. Uh, the Apple Crunch is an annual event and the Celebrating Seasonality Recipe Guide is a brand new tool that is out in the world and we're excited to share both and uh, hopefully inject some farm to early care activities and resources into your life. We will go ahead and get started, but you can also see that today's uh, partnership and webinar is brought to you by CIS, the Center for Integrated Ag Systems at UW-Medicine, Rooted, our Wisconsin Farm to School Network and Wisconsin Farm to Early Care Working Groups, and also we're already preparing for National Farm to School Month. Even though that's in October, we'd like to get started early. So thank you so much for being here today. So as I mentioned, um, this is a collaborative event today by Rooted, and we have some partners from Rooted who will be presenting, and from the Center for Integrated Ag Systems at UW-Madison. We will send a ton of links and resources out after the webinar so that you can follow up on everything um, that we have talked about. And also, if you are interested in planning ahead for National Farm to School Month, the National Farm to School website has a bunch of great resources, and we will be sure to share those with you as well. All right, so what are we going to cover today? We're going to make it quick and we're going to get you back out the door. So we're going to do some basics about what is farm to early care in Wisconsin and Steph from Rooted is going to cover that. We're going to give you the lowdown on the apple crunch, what you need to know to find your apples and crunch, and also the great resources that we have to share around education and recipes for local apples and farm to early care in the classroom. And then we will introduce the new Celebrating Seasonality Recipe Guide, which Hawthorne from Rooted will walk us through. We're super excited. We do also want to let you know, we will be very active in the chat. So if you have questions while we go, feel free to put them in and somebody will try and answer them. At the end of each section, we'll take specific questions, but we'll also hold a bit of Q&A for the end. So feel free to interact with each other. Um, feel free to ask us questions. And also, if you have tips, best practices, awesome stories from you doing any of these things or doing any farm to ECE, put them in the chat. We love hearing your anecdotes of what makes this successful for you. Um, so we want to hear from you through the chat, too. So we are going to go ahead and get started um, and staff from Rooted is going to introduce herself real quick and also we are going to just start with a little bit of a poll here in theory. Steph, why don't you start talking and I'm going to get that poll going. Sounds great. Uh, welcome again everybody. My name is Steph Bugash Scopeline. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, and I am a farm to ECE trainer or farm to early care and education trainer um, based in Madison, Wisconsin. And I work for the nonprofit named Rooted. Um, we work to support um, ECE sites by creating resources and doing different trainings around farm to ECE. Um, and when we talk about farm to ECE, we are talking about these four general um, areas or these four buckets of farm to ECE. 
Um, we have local foods and meals and snacks and taste testing, um, hands-on learning and play and nutrition, um, food and agriculture, family or planting and tending to edible plants. This is like gardening or having maybe um, an apple orchard at your site or maybe a couple of fruit trees. Um, family and, and last one is family engagement and health and wellness. So together these, um, any sort of activities or things that ways that you might engage that um, fit into any one of these areas, um, that means that you are doing farm to ECE. And the apple crunch, we're gonna kind of go through and um, just discuss each, each one of these areas more specifically, but the apple crunch really integrates well into um, all of these areas. Are we gonna do the poll or should we move forward? Let's move forward because I cannot find, I cannot get the poll to work. So if you want, okay. just type in the chat box, how familiar are you with farm to early care? Are you super familiar? Is this all new to you? Give us a sense of, of where you are in your learning and your experience. Great, so that first um, content area um, is local purchasing. This is basically just purchasing local fruits or vegetables um, or products, like um, it could be dairy as well, um, incorporating them into your um, early care site. So this, um, why would we want to purchase locally? Um, it's a great way to support your community, right? We're putting in those local dollars. Oh, here is a poll. I have, what is your role in ECE? Um, looks like there's a couple of different options, which is great. So as that is um, continuing to go, I'll just, um, so right, again, it's incredibly important to support our community by putting those local dollars by supporting local farmers. Um, buying local is also a great way to increase access to fresh fruits and vegetables, right? The earliest, you know, the, the shorter the distance between um, when the food is harvested to when it enters um, our, when it comes to our table and enters our bodies, right? The fresher and better tasting that those foods are. Is because it's especially important, I'm sure, as you all are aware, right? Kids can be really picky and having fresh foods is really helpful. Um, meal time, right? This is incorporating fresh foods and vegetables can be a wonderful way to, to increase the fun and learning around trying new foods um, and meals. Um, there's, you know, ways we also want to talk about how can you buy local foods? Um, some of ideas are going to a local farmer's market. You could also um, purchase a CSA or community supported agriculture share. This is like a weekly, it's like a subscription box where you get a box um, either every week or um, every other couple of weeks um, of a box of local um, vegetables. Or you can look in your grocery store. There's oftentimes um, little local stickers that you can find for local purchasing. The next um, area, um, hands-on learning. So we have um, some ideas for hands-on learning when we're talking about nutrition is we can do dramatic play stations, like maybe we're pretending to be a farmer or a chef. Um, cooking with kids is a wonderful hands-on activity, right? When we cook with children, um, they have a hand in actually making the food and their, their increased willingness to try something is increases tenfold. Um, we can do different taste tests, so trying different foods. Um, I like to do this with different colors of foods. So for the apple crunch, we could have red apples and we could have green apples or red apples and yellow apples. And we could ask the kids instead of like, do you like the apple? We could ask them which apple do they like best? Again, kind of putting that positive spin on trying new foods. Um, when we do taste tests and hands-on learning, I love to ask open-ended questions. How does this make you feel? Um, what are your thoughts around trying new foods? And can kind of get kids to start to explore that social and emotional learning side and kind of connect with their bodies and their thoughts. As you all know, incorporating music and movement is super fun. Um, so we can sing songs about vegetables. We can sing songs about farmers, um, using our bodies to act like vegetables or um, you know animals is a really great way. Um, and then in the end, right, when we engage in all of these different places and engaging in new foods can be a great opportunity for using those fine and gross motor skills. Next area is gardening or, um, you know, tending to edible plants. Like, as I mentioned, 
Um, with cooking, you know, when we garden with children, it's very similar to cooking with children. Their willingness to try those new foods increases tenfold. So by going to a local apple orchard or having maybe an apple tree at your center or providing a garden, right, just creates another next level of connection for children to their food um, and can really increase that willingness to try these fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, some tips when we're gardening with kids is providing child sized tools. So making sure that we're not handing them big shovels that are too large for their little hands. Um, using container gardens, so maybe finding a large pot, um, or we can be creative with different containers or kind of keeping the garden small if this is your first year gardening, um, just so that the children can easily reach things um, and have better accessibility to the plants. Um, and then when we're in the garden with the kids or maybe we're at the apple orchard, um, don't be afraid to engage all of the senses. What do the plants look like? What do the plants smell like? What do they feel like? And really allowing that space for exploration um, within the garden and not being afraid of, you know, the garden doesn't have to be a no touch zone. Um, the garden can be a wonderful place to explore all these things. And then again, it just creates a strong connection to our food. The last um, bucket or area um, of Farm DC is family engagement. Um, and so there are, as um, we know through many of the different um, young star things that you're, you're required to do, right? Family engagement is a huge part of early care sites and Farm DC can be a wonderful way to engage your families, um, right? You can provide resources to community members um, to your different families on SNAP or WIC if they're needing access to those resources. Um, it's also a really fun way you can create um, drop off and pick up um, activities with your families through Farm to ECE. So maybe you have a garden and you have extra vegetables um, you can bring, you can have at pickup, right? The kids can, you can send home vegetables with the families. And maybe there's a little recipe card in there on something that they can make with the vegetables that they're collecting. This photo is from the Davis Child Care Center um, and they have a little farmer's market at the end on Fridays and the parents get to come and pay for the foods um, that they take home then with their kids. Um, I think it is fake money, but it, it's a great way to engage. <laughs> um, again, you could create a recipe book with family engagement. And then also if you do a taste test, um, you can like engage the families in that same taste test. Do you like the red apple or the yellow apple? If you're crunching with your, um, if you're engaging in the apple crunch, you could have two crunches and you could do a crunch at um, pickup where the parents get to crunch with their kids, again, kind of supporting those local apples as well. I think that is it for me in terms of, oh, and the last thing is why are we here for Farm to ECE? In the end, right, we're creating, our, our goal is to connect um, children to their food, to kind of learn where their food comes from. Hopefully they're gonna then try those new foods and they're gonna then um, incorporate these foods into their daily lives and their daily um leading to healthier habits and hopefully um, leading to healthier adulthood. So again, these are, um, we have, if you're looking for more resources on Farm to ECE, here is um, a link to our website and I can put that in the chat as well. Um, but that basically is the basics of Farm to ECE. And now I'll turn it over to Vanessa um, to talk about the crunch and learn more about that. Thank you, Steph. Let's just open up real quick. If folks have any questions or anything you want to share, um, type them in the chat super quick, or you can just unmute yourself. And while that is happening, Bree is going to share the poll results so we know what kind of folks we have on the call today. It says that I am sharing the poll results. Can everyone see them? Yes, great. All right. Well, hearing no questions, let's move on. And we are going to talk about the Great Lakes Great Apple Crunch. And I will say, even if you are not in the Great Lakes region, we can still talk about crunching. New York, I believe you do have a crunch in your fine state. And also all of the concepts here work, even if there isn't a celebration. Um, also, I'll say one of my highlights of the crunch is getting to see all of these adorable pictures of kiddos crunching into apples. We do have a poll in theory asking folks if they have done the crunch before. Brie, if you could um, find that and throw that up, we will keep moving and people can answer the poll while we go forward. So what is the Great Lakes Great Apple Crunch? It is a regional celebration 
Uh, we partnered with the six states between Minnesota and Ohio to celebrate National Farm to School Month. And National Farm to School Month does incorporate early care in the early care environments. And to celebrate, we basically all buy local apples or grow them in our own orchards or gardens and crunch into them at the same time, noon on crunch day. And um, we just have what we call the crunch herd around the region. In past years, we have gotten as high as 1.8 million crunches. Last year, we had 800,000 in the pandemic. And so what we see is that, yes, your site might be um, eight kids or 20 kids crunching into apples. But when we think about what that means, that a million people are doing this across the region, it feels pretty powerful to be part of something that is supporting our local farmers and supporting nutritious uh, and quality early care. What we find for the crunch is that it is really fun and easy for early care providers to participate in, especially if it is um, a site that is really new to farm to early care. We know that you all are so busy um, and especially during COVID that there are so many challenges. And the way we kind of make the crunch work is it's like a choose your own adventure where you learn how to find local apples and buy them, and then you can you know, choose any activities or learning opportunities to go with the crunch. And uh, it's like a, a great way to introduce people to how easy it can be to do some small farm to early care activities. And this is a quote from an early care participant last year. So why crunch? I mean, it, what does it mean that there's a million K-12 kids and early care kids holding apples and biting into them at the same time. We do a survey with everybody that participates and people do say it is a really good opportunity and an avenue and a reason to educate eaters, whether it's the kiddos or their families or even additional staff or partners that you have about local foods, about nutritious food choices, um, and about you know how food and our worlds are connected. It's also a great opportunity. It's a real reason to have a relationship with a local farmer. And we'll talk about what that means and where to find local apples. It's also a really fun activity. Um, we'll send you the link to the Facebook page, which is just full of you know, kids making applesauce, biting into apples, drawing pictures of apples. So hopefully this event gives you, you know, some opportunities to try some new activities that are also just fun. Um, and really our goal is that this is a way that you can practice buying local apples for the first time, but maybe that will turn into a long-term local food purchasing practice uh, at your site. And you can dip your toe in the water and see how fun and easy it is and then hopefully get interested in buying more. The crunch obviously is focused on apples, but anything that you can serve, you could pretty much buy locally. So this is just some information from last year. We had 807,000 participants in the crunch. The way participation works is there's a registration page. You as an early care provider, you register, you just tell us um, how many kids how many kids age zero to five, how many K-12 kids and how many adults are crunching. That's where these numbers come from. And then we collect a little bit more information. Like if you know where you're getting your apples, um, we know that last year, 58% of people knew which orchard grew their apples. And I just think it's a great opportunity to find that connection, tell that story to kids and their families about where their food and nutrition is coming from and help foster those relationships throughout throughout the rest of the year. So how to crunch. The good thing is that crunch is really easy. First step, go to the crunch page and register. We'll share the link. Find your local apples. Maybe you already go to a farmer's market. We'll talk more about that. Choose some fun crunch day activities and we'll give you a great list to choose from. Promote your crunch, which means letting your community and your site know that you're crunching and also using it as a way to promote your center, your site, and talk about the great things that you do and the quality of care that you have. And then there's crunch day where really you are handing out those apples and kids are crunching and then sharing your story afterwards through social media, through your newsletter. So we'll run through a little bit of what this is, but the good news is this is actually all written down um, through resources that you get when you register. So this is all in print and you don't have to worry about writing stuff down now. So when you register um, and Bree, maybe you can put the registration link in the chat box. You just fill out a super quick form so we can capture how many people are crunching at your site, adults and kids. And then you get um, 
some great resources to help you advance your farm to early care in your crunch. So when you register, you can actually order these Apple Crunch stickers. So you get free stickers, which we apologize in advance if you have to scrape them off the floor, but the kids do really seem to love them. You get um, a link to a whole bunch of resources that you can see here. So the Crunch Guide, which will talk about a bunch of recipes that are early care site appropriate, um, all of the logo files so you can make posters. We have coloring pages. We have some fun guides for kids and then additional resources. And then you get the Crunch Guide, which we will talk about, which is you can see it's specific for early care and education sites. It will walk through everything you need to know to find your apples and plan some great educational activities. So how do you find apples? If you're already in the practice of buying local foods, you know that there are a lot of great resources. So if you already know where to go, you could go to a farmer's market, maybe you belong to a CSA, and that would connect you with a farm that would have apples. Um, sometimes a grocery store or co-op will sell local foods and they're marked, you know, grown in Wisconsin or grown locally, and then you'll know where those are from. It's even better when it has the name of the farm listed on it. But if this is really new to you, we want to make sure it's easy for you to find opportunities near you. So the Wisconsin Apple Growers Association, and there's something similar in every state, has a great interactive map uh, with a list of all of the orchards. And those are uh, orchards that do farm stands. Sometimes they do pick your own. Or you could do a special relationship where you place an order for apples for your crunch day. And also, hopefully, for your regular apple purchasing for your site or for making applesauce or other activities. You can also check out the Wisconsin Farmers Market Association map to find a market near you. The Farm Fresh Atlas is a great interactive tool for finding farms near you that grow apples and also figuring out how they sell them. And then there's um, three resources on the bottom. The AmeriCorps Farmers School Program has a great interactive database to help you find farms and then something special from Wisconsin and a USDA tool to find on-farm on markets. We like to start with apples. They really are the low hanging fruit. Um, and there are easy ways to find apple growers near you. Also, Bree and I are here to help you with anything you might need. The next big piece is connecting to learning. So yeah, we wanna crunch into those apples at noon or you know, slurp applesauce for kiddos who are too young to eat an apple. Um, but there's so many great ways to integrate apples for the day or for the week into your lesson plans. So formal lesson planning, reading books about apples, singing songs about apples, trying cooking activities with apples, like making applesauce, dehydrating apples, and then also fun engagement activities like having an apple taste test, planning a field trip, or having a virtual visit from a farmer or a chef because um, we have to get creative during COVID. So there's all these ways to take this one apple bite um, and make that into a fun learning experience or a theme for a week or a month. Uh, some examples, and this is all in the crunch guide, including links to really specific um, lesson plans. Do a taste test with different varieties of apples that are different colors maybe, and ask kids to describe them using different adjectives to um, put a sticker next to the one that they like. Um, have kiddos cut out and decorate apples with their names on them and put them on a tree. And then my favorite, trace a hand to make an apple tree that kids can color in. So there's all these creative ways to have your crunch, talk about apples where they come from, but also integrate that into activities for the rest of the day. It is also a great way to connect with family and community. This is an example of actually an apple cider press, which would be quite a heavy lift, um, but there are all the fun things that you could do like offering apples for um, when caregivers come to pick up kiddos and doing a crunch and taking a picture of each family crunching at the end of the day or sending information home about where your apples came from and maybe a fun recipe, which there's also a bunch of in the crunch guide for families um, to take and make in the home environment. So this is a great way to have some themes to send home to families. Connecting and sharing, what's really fun about the crunch is that uh, it's a great way to share out. So there's a big social media piece where we give you all the hashtags and ways to share and see what other people are doing. But also, you know, when it comes to talking about the great things that you are doing and promoting your own site, you know, saying we do the crunch and having these great pictures and sharing it with your community can be a really big strength too. We are kind of at the end here. Here's all the resources on the crunch. Um, if you are not in Wisconsin, but you still want a copy of the crunch guide uh, as a resource, just let us know, we'll send it to you. That is no problem. Um, 
happy to answer more, but wanted to get you started on the crunch. Any quick questions of the crunch before we start talking about the recipe guide? All right, Hawthorne, passing it over to you. Hello, hello. My name is Hawthorne McCracken. I use they, them pronouns, and I work with staff at Rooted as a farm to early care outreach specialist. And we just have a couple of screenshots of the celebrating seasonality recipe guide that I will walk you through real quick. Um, big shout out, this resource was created in a collaboration between CIAS and Rooted with the Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And you can find it on Rooted's website at rootedwi.org slash recipes, which will be in your resource document we will send out to you soon. Next. Oh, my slides are, oh, I see we are opening the website, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you can see the web page. Um, and if you scroll down, we have a place that you can order um, a physical copy of the website once we get those printed. And we do have a Spanish version coming soon and you can sign up for the wait list there. There are also some printable um, recipe guide cards with just the recipes and measurements on there for quick access. And they're sorted by season. So I encourage you all to check that website out and scroll through when you can. So these recipes include, let's see if we can go to the contents. They have um, 12 recipes, so three for each season, and all of them are CACFP friendly. So if you do use the child and adult care food program for some food funding, all of these recipes um, can be easily reported and are compliant with those guidelines. So we have a little section on seasonal availability and then we go into each of the recipes, one snack, one breakfast and one lunch or dinner, as well as some resources towards the end. So here is an example of one of the recipe cards and this one is our apple recipe for October, which is a fall breakfast. And they have two different serving sizes. One is for eight servings if you have a smaller like family care site and another is 25 servings if you have uh, larger class sizes. And they will specify what, what meal type it is, um, the major food components. This one is grains and some oat muffin as well as some substitutions and appropriate age groups. And our next page is a lovely seasonal availability guide. And if you're not in Wisconsin, this might still be applicable if you are um, sort of a Northern state, but your state should also have a similar seasonal availability guide. And this is just a great one to hang up um, in the office or the kitchen to sort of keep track of when things are gonna come into harvest and what might be available if you do a farmer's market trip and help to plan some of your food service or um, featured snacks for that season. And our recipe guide also includes profiles of both, <laughs> both um, child care centers and local farmers. So here's an example of a child care center profile and their connections to Farm to ECE and some great success stories for them as well as one of our local farmers here in the Madison area with Los Abuelos and Farley Farm and Los Jalapenos CSA, and give sort of a bio of that farmer's background as well as some of their specialties. So if you are in Wisconsin, there are some great farmers here that you might be able to connect with personally for your food sourcing. And other items included in celebrating seasonality, our information on why buying local foods is important. Um, you know, you've got the economic aspect of supporting your community, supporting farmers, and also the connections between food and culture and the potential to find growers and farmers who may share a cultural background with many of your students, as well as um, some more resources on how to find and buy Wisconsin fruits and veggies, more info on those local farmers markets and how to find those local labels in grocery stores as well as CSAs. I think CSAs are a great option for many childcare sites because they are able to make a smaller or medium-sized custom box for you 
we've had some great success with child care sites partnering with local CSAs, even um, to serve as a pickup location for their other orders. And some tips for food preparation, if you are new to working with whole veggies, especially big things like squash, um, there's some advice in there. And I think the next slide just shows you that rooted recipe page again, and encourage you to also explore rooted's other resources on our website, which will be under the four educators tab. And you can sign up for our farm to school and farm to ECE newsletter at that link there. Oops, sorry, my computer's goofing up on me. <laughs> and yep, our resource page there for early care providers as well as our social media. And feel free to shoot us an email, wifarmtoece at rootedwisconsin.org if you have any other questions or if you would like some more detailed technical assistance on farm to ece and gardens. Thank you, Hoffa. Also, apologies that the slides were scooting around. Any questions or comments from folks about the recipe guide before we do a little bit of wrap up and Q&A? I think you guys were sharing in the chat that I just wanted to mention that other excellent uh, seasonal resource, which is the new harvest of the month recipes that were just put out by Wisconsin's Ex um, Department of Extension. And those are great and a, a lovely companion to this seasonality guide. Yeah, that is taking us to the end of our content today. I thank you for your patience because my computer screen is being a little bit jumpier than usual. Um, let's open it up to see if folks have any questions, comments, or any more great stories you want to share of farm to school success or sort of what, not farm to school, farm to early care success or what some of your next steps might be as well. hearing nothing. What a quiet group. All right. Well, we will wrap up here. Um, Steph and Hawthorne, any last thoughts you have? And while we say that, let's see if we can dig up the evaluation survey link and throw that in the chat as well. I'll just echo everything that we've been talking about today. I think the crunch is a great way to engage, um, kind of cover all of those different interest areas within Farm to ECE. Um, and just again is um, local apples are delicious. And I think that it's a great way to get kids um, to try new foods and again, support our local economy. Thank you, Steph. It is um, fun and exciting to look at all of the really simple ways to start to introduce farm to early care, whether it is finding and buying, inviting into a local apple, or whether it is something like taking that first step into using a new recipe that incorporates a local Wisconsin grown or wherever you are. Um, seasonal item. We do have an evaluation survey for you. We're trying to dig up the link to put it in the chat, but for some reason it is not handy for us and we will send it out to you afterwards and hope that you can fill that out. I am looking for that evaluation link, but in the meantime, I'm going to share the last poll results. It looks like a lot of you have actually crunched before. Thank you, Bree. Um, we'll just let everybody know that probably by tomorrow we will send out a recording of this and we will also send active links to most of the resources that we talked about. We hope that you will go to the Rooted Wisconsin um, website and access the uh, Celebrating Seasonality Recipe Guide and also that you will um, register for the crunch and that we can crunch with you on October 14th. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time and we hope to see you in future Farm to Early Care venues. Have a great day.